All right. <clears throat> well, here we go. Got our buddy Bob Hemphill in the house. Um, yeah, he's uh, live, live and in the flesh. What up, Bob? Oh, yeah. Thanks for having me. Oh, dude, it was a fucking yeah. honor having you on, man. You're a rare and elusive, elusive type. <laughs> well, I'm always down to shoot the shit with you, man. You know that. Oh yeah, no doubt, no doubt. Fuck yeah. What you got uh got going on in the background there? You got some San Pedro's? Yeah, yeah. Uh doing the cactus thing. Um just get a lot of peace at spending time in the greenhouse with them. Hell yeah. Throwing Hell yeah. them. Yeah, it's always a good place to be. It's like a nice uh like a Zen place, you know what I mean? You can just kinda chill yep this is where i go to get my piece that's for sure yeah yeah we all we all need a bit of that we gotta have that uh that quiet space you know what i mean just to kind of recenter if you will <laughs> oh, bro. hell yeah man so what else uh what else is new what, what's crapping it man what's going on oh man just trying to stay busy with uh work and you know spend time with the fam and just uh enjoy life spending a lot of time hiking going to the beaches and shit yeah dude yeah that's good you gotta have uh gotta have that balance between work and uh work and family time and all that it's it's hard because they are literally both of them are two full-time jobs at the same time 100 percent, man it's uh been a challenge for us um but you know it's it's amazing, amazing thing for sure. Um, just been uh, trying to get some open pollinations done. Finished the Peshawar uh, Pakistan open pollination uh, a few months ago. Um, just about to finish the Tom Hills Hayes open pollination now. Hell yeah. Oh, Positronics. <laughs> yes, Positronics uh, F4s. I made. Um, did open pollination with Tom Hill's F1s a few years ago, and now I got to messing with the F2s and making F3s. So it's uh, Positronics F4s, Tom Hill's F3. Hell yeah, dude! Hell yeah, and like I said, it takes a takes a long time. When did you say you started? Kind of started the workings of the project like a couple years ago. Yeah, well, I did uh, open pollination on the Tom Hill's uh, F1 a few years ago and um finally getting around to just uh redoing it um trying to get all my seed lines and the fresh seed stock and i'm gonna store them in the freezer and refrigerator and a few different spots to make sure the seeds you know stay fresh hell yeah dude that way if you want to revisit it in about 20 something yeah if i get we're gonna live a long time maybe 50 years from now <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely, uh, I got so many that I'm not going to be able to get back to all of them for quite some time, so this is the only way to keep them around. Hell yeah, hell yeah. What do you think, uh, what are you thinking about the old tissue culture, man? Like, we could uh, have a little tissue culture lab set up, we could start stashing stuff away and keep greenhouses worth of shit in the fridge. Oh my god, yeah, that's, uh, that's the path we're on right now we need to be able to go on vacation you know yeah. Hannah and i haven't gone on vacation ever you know in like 20 some years and um you know now, now we got a family just gonna be living like that and um you know need to go visit family and whatnot yeah man know. 
that, that ball and chain of uh, being the grower, being the breeder, kind of kind of get your key to back to freedom. You can move around a little bit better. Yeah, the moms don't give a shit, man. They don't care about holidays, vacations, nothing, man. And if you're committed to keeping them, you're pretty much yes gonna be around. So absolutely that's for a long time. Yeah, a lot of people don't understand. That's a uh, that's another one of those uh, full time things. It's the preservation aspect, keeping moms alive, moms happy, and they might see, oh yeah, you're doing this project, you're doing that project, but they don't realize all the other work. It's just maintaining shit that might not come, you know, a couple years down the road or or whatever, you know. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I, I'm, you know, I like to test uh, all of our stuff in house, or at least most of it, and um, so I don't make too many, you know. So I got a lot of female clones that, you know, aren't being bred, and um, yeah, you know, serving them, you know. Yeah, man, just there for uh, preservation's sake, you know. <clears throat> like I said, there's stuff that like I like to grow and I like to smoke, but it ain't going to breed worth the shit or it's just something that, you know, it just, it ain't there for that. It's literally there just for, you know, cause at the end of the day, we're still, uh, you know, we're a couple stoners and shit. So, you know, we like to grow and blaze too, but it's like, it's two different things sometimes, you know? I mean, uh, yeah. in late nineties, uh, that's the reason we started keeping these clones is because we wanted to be able to smoke them again. And, um, just uh, when I got with Coastal, that just got me on a mission to get them all in the seat form and spread them out to the people's hands. And, um, you know, because like we've been talking about, keeping these clones alive is a pain in the ass, man. Having um, a pack of seeds in the fridge is really easy. You know, you, know, you can just yeah. pull them out and on them. Yeah, exactly, dude. And like I said, it, it's like heartbreaking when something's gone. And there's just no getting it back. Fuck yeah, dude. I don't even want to go down that list. There's so <laughs> many. Yeah, man. It's uh it's a damn shame, you know. And like the other thing that's like real appealing about that tissue culture stuff is um with all the different diseases and, and nastiness that's going on, um, you know, being able to like always go back to something something clean a nice clean source from the start that's always good i know that uh hop plate and shit running around uh or excuse me the hemp plate and shit is going around um that's uh it's no bueno yeah i had to drop a bunch of clones some of them i've been keeping for 20 years um stop trading with people yeah um <laughs> I think there's a lot more viruses going around than just that one. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I, I had to kill a couple off, you know, and, um, it's just, it's not worth trading. I just got to protect what I have now. Yeah. is my goal. <laughs> if you, uh, let's say like you had like, you know, your, uh, Bob Hemphill tissue culture lab set up in the back, then you could probably like, go back to like taking stuff in and like bring it back through uh, that and get a, get something clean back then. Right. Oh yeah, for sure. Without a doubt. Um, you know, I have a really couple good friends, uh, that, you know, are into the same mindset as I am. And, you know, I think, um, we can just bounce the knowledge back you know, amongst each other and uh, get this done, you know? Oh, yeah. This is what uh, needs to happen. Yeah. It, it, it needs to be in, in the power uh, of the growers, you know, of the people that have been keeping these clones alive for a, a while. We can't just trust uh, people that, uh, you know, went to college and have money and they started to shoot culture labs. It needs to be the people that have been holding the genetics, you know, for the last quarter century, you know, and those are a couple of the people that I've been working with and uh, talking with. And um, we're going to get it done. Fuck yeah. I'm happy as a dog with two dicks to hear that, dude. Because that was always a thing in the past is like somebody hits you up. Oh, yeah, man. Um, <clears throat> yeah, got this buddy. Uh, he can tissue culture your shit. And you have no idea who it is. And you, before you know it, you know, it's starting to sound 
buy low C, <laughs> you know, and you're like, nah, I think I'm good. You know, it was always that trust factor before. Yeah, man, it's, uh, it's fucking insane. The amount of scammers that have come out into the cannabis since it's become legal, you know, back in the day, you know, you had to worry about a fucking beat down in the cops and it kept all those fucking, you know, slimy bastards out of the game. Exactly, man. Now that they yeah. worry about yeah, because like before yeah. you know it, you got uh, Bob Humphill choking you out at an Emerald Cup. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's always a good. That was a good memory. Yeah, for everybody that knows, yeah, like yeah. If I get a break from the booth. I'm walking out. I'm like, yeah, let me uh, <clears throat> let me go holler at Bob. Can't find him anywhere. I was like, well, shit, you know, I'm gonna walk out back. Go, you know, you know, I have a piss, man walk around the corner there's bob choking the fuck out of this dude like, hey man what's up <laughs> i was like oh geez in the middle of something he's like no i'm letting this motherfucker be eight old play what do you think about that and i was like oh man that's fucking great <laughs> yeah man i really um you know sometimes you gotta just you know keep it real you know yep. um, i had the motherfucker screaming for the police and shit you know but you know <laughs> <laughs> oh shit um yeah this, yeah yeah watch what you <laughs> yeah. yeah you get a lot of the uh <clears throat> just between the shit bag people and then you got the internet uh internet tough guys and all that shit too like it, it makes it it makes it rough sometimes you go to an event or whatever and you see them but like you know in my mindset, it's like I might just want to go up and jaw this motherfucker, and then I gotta think like, man, fuck, dude, prison fucking sucks, you know. But then you know you weigh it out and you see that opportunity, you know, and you're like, ah, fuck it, let's do this thing. Yeah, you know, I'm, you know, I'm a lot like my dogs, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, but the reason I like them, um, you know, that guy's, you know, hella lucky. I didn't know. A few weeks later, I found out that he was beaten on a girl, and she was actually a friend of mine for like 20 years. So if I would have known that at the time, it was a lot worse for his punk ass. So yeah. um, that's somebody I definitely don't regret doing that to. So, yeah, no I, doubt. I really, uh, you know, I, I, I don't like to not be violent, you know, you know, yeah. the cannabis, is, you know, um, if it wouldn't have been for cannabis, I, you know, would have been on the East Coast drinking alcohol. You know, I'm just uh, not the friendliest person. I like animals and shit, but, you know, have a tough time with people I always have. And, uh, yeah, that's just part of it, man. Like, I, I feel you on that because it's like I'm a people person with certain people, you know, like certain people like I can kick it with, but... A lot of times, man, ah, God, it, it's it's rough on me, you know, but I have to have them same struggles. I have to, uh, you know, just uh, do do my best. That's uh, that's about all we can do, right, bud? Yeah, man. I mean, fucking, you know, just sometimes you got to be real, you know? Yeah. It's the way it is. Yeah. Um. Sometimes you gotta call a motherfucker out, you know. Like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm always like, one no peace. I want equal rights and justice. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Yeah, there just comes a point. <clears throat> there's like certain things we look at. It's just like, yeah, it's some bullshit or whatever. But there comes like that level of just disrespect and bullshit where you're just like, yeah, I can't, uh, I, I, I can't keep my mouth shut anymore. I, I gotta call this shit out the way it is. Yeah, yeah, when, um, you know, people start spreading lies, that's, you know, you can talk shit all you want, you know, you can right. say, you know, Pop's an asshole, you know, Bob doesn't grow the best weed, none of that shit's ever gonna bother me. Yeah. Know? Yeah. He doesn't freak it, you know? Yeah, I know what you yeah. mean. But, uh, you know? Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, man. Know what you mean? I've had a bit of that here uh, 
here in the past, like while I was away, it's like I'm the same way and call me an asshole, this and that, but what you can't say, I'm definitely not a liar. I'm not a thief. And uh, when uh, somebody else is just spreading some bullshit for their own gains, you know, it's like, hey, yeah, that's got to that's gotta come to a wrap. You got to you gotta iron this out and set it straight, you know what I mean? But the cool thing is, is like, when you tell them the truth, uh, you don't have to keep up with, uh, you know, a bunch of bullshit. So when you're actually coming at them with the truth, you, you always will kind of watch them scramble and start changing shit up. Like, all right, that's what's up. Yeah, yeah, no doubt, no doubt. That's bullshit, you know. Um, that's what I mean about, you know, people worried, not worried about getting their fucking shit knocked out of them, you yeah. know, coming out. You know, that's like the perfect example, you know. Like, everybody that knows you knows you've been doing work for a long time. And, um, you know, talk about kicking a motherfucker when he's down. You know, that's some <laughs> ridiculous shit, right? Yeah, but, you know, that's like the, the sign of like a... You know, like a true, uh, true coward, you know, is like, that's, that's kind of what they do, you know, it's so like, same as the internet tough guy, you know, like they're getting safe behind the, uh, keyboard or whatever, but you know, it is what it is, you know, dudes like us, we'll, we'll go keep it moving. We can keep moving regardless. But, uh, what, uh, what was that that you had in your hand there? Oh, what are you, what you, what you smoking on there? That's some that uh fuck BX too, man. A little freaking oh, oh man, getting puffed up. Yeah, that yeah, for sure. Uh, <laughs> this shit is uh, really good. I, it better it came out better than I ever could have imagined. I've always loved the the puck clone, but this shit is seriously like really, really good. Yeah, it's fucking it's fucking next level, dude. Yeah, I've been looking uh looking at the uh looking at the ig page here man um just <clears throat> wow got a lot of a lot of pretty uh a lot of pretty pictures on here but like i'll sit there and look at them like holy shit man because uh i messed around with some uh puck hybrids too and like like i said they just come out fucking nuts man i mean look at this shit and Got some outstanding pictures, man. Kudos for that. Yeah, that's Hannibal. She can take an amazing uh, picture. And, um, Hell yeah. The mason jar it, background's always just classic. Like you just set up for success with, with, with those, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's how I roll. You know, that's what I got it on right now. So. Oh, uh, yeah, I saw this too. Get the uh, fake account, that fucking asshole that keeps, uh, <clears throat> he adds like a letter to the uh, to the name or whatever, trying to scam people and stuff. That dude's all yeah. over the place, man. Yeah, dude, he's hitting me up all the time, man. If, you know, somebody hits you up and they're acting like they're me and they're pressing you in the fucking yeah. money. It ain't fucking me, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Exactly. You know, you're a sharp, sharp looking fellow, man. <laughs> oh yeah dude yeah we got uh got all this all this cool uh all this cool stuff man we got the uh the sensi star puck and that that one's awesome yeah that that shit just clicked insane like and so what do you think sensi star is you know um I couldn't, I couldn't honestly, couldn't honestly tell you, man. Um, no, it was uh, frosty as hell. What you got? You know, I've heard from a couple of reliable sources that it's garlic bud by NL Hawaiian. Ooh, that explains. You know, it. I, you know that it, that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense, especially with what I see it producing. Um, I can't guarantee that that's what it is. You know. Oh yeah, yeah, man. Fucking uh, still fucking phenomenal looking how that uh how that turned out like smell and all the all the good stuff oh man it turned out all the good stuff man uh you know like i literally could just smoke that shit straight for 10 years um oh yeah dude my my homie wick family farms uh just passed me another sensi star so i have two of them now and um 
I threw bo both of them in the breeding room right now, and I'm hitting them to the Puck BX twos, and I'm making Puck BX threes. Yeah. Um, just the way that it clicked with that, uh, you know, since two star and the Puck man, it, it, it's just insanely potent and um, really tasty. You know, like they they got some really cool terps, man, and um, you know. What did uh, what did it taste like, bud? Winning, dude. You know, um, it tastes like fucking dank, dude. Like dank nineties weed, like fucking garlic, onion. Um, more than one time when I was breaking this shit up, people in the room hollered the s word. You know, yeah. I don't ever fucking uh, advertise my shit, but the shit is definitely pretty close to that. Um, you know, if you got a pack of the BX ones by the Census Star, fucking take cuts. You know, like for real. Um, we grew them out, and we didn't take cuts. And every single female was a fucking contender to be a serious keeper. And um, lots of uh, people that are experienced with cannabis, uh, you know, saw it and said it's some of the best shit they've ever seen, um, or you know, seen in a long time. You know. Um, you know, so for some, you know, you know, pucks from the 80s and census starts from the 90s. And for those two to just click like that to make shit that's just as good as anything now, you know, it's uh, pretty special, you know. Um, yeah, it's one of the big, beautiful. biggest compliments I got um, was from Shiloh Massif. And he had said it's the best lady I've seen in a decade. And, um, I'll never forget that. That's one of the best compliments I've ever gotten. So. I have a, you know, a lot of respect for him. He's one of the OG of cannabis breeders of the Emerald Triangle. Yeah, dude. And that's the thing, man. Like when you got uh you know, a lot of people will tell you stuff, but when you when you when you get a compliment like that from somebody who's uh been around as long and smoked as much killer weed as they have, that lets you know like you you definitely you hidden in that right direction. You know, like you're hitting some marks. Cause it's hard to judge, right? Like me and you like we'll make something we smoking like yeah is it that good and then you gotta you gotta uh you know give it and get some outside opinions you know and then when you're hearing back you're like yeah it wasn't just me yeah man it, it was uh really cool because uh, i've been fucking staying real low-key because of the whole covid bullshit and um you know not going out and so it was cool to go out to some events this spring and you know, get the feedback I did on the work because, um, you know, it's it's one thing for me to just say on my Instagram that the shit's dank as fuck, but when you get to hear reviews from other people like him and Mean Gene and, um, you know, people that went to the regenerative cannabis event, you know, um, so like next year I'll be there again, you know, and I'll, I just got jars and I just let people smoke as much as they want, you know? Hell yeah a good way to check out a really and uh joey burger is doing uh sea swaps up in humboldt and all over northern california um those are some of the coolest events um i've been to and uh you know the humboldt local and uh you know you should really try to go to those it's like the old uh school uh emerald triangle vibe from the 90s and you know, early 2000s, and he's bringing that shit back, and it's really fucking awesome. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, it's good. It's kind of like that other event that kind of started that way, you know, and then kind of kind of went to the wayside, so it's it's awesome to hear somebody else's, uh, you know, coming back and, you know, making something like that, because that's what it really is about, you know, instead of all the corporation, corporation shit is, you know, a bunch of like-minded people with, you know, like-minded goals, you know? Yeah, man, it's fucking, um, you know, cannabis is, you know, something that, you know, I believe was really put here to bring us together and, um, make us stronger, you know, and, um, it's really kind of sad to see what's happened on this last, you know, you know, eight, to, you know, or so years because of legalization, you know, yeah. but uh, once this greed, you know, the first 
tidal wave pushes through, I think the plan is uh, going to prevail and um, I think shit will come back to normal. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, man. And, you know, it's like about, uh, you know, good people getting back together and, you know, helping one another out and stuff like that. It's like, you don't need to be a corporate entity or something like that, you know, just, you know, small groups of uh, friends and shit like that. You can, you know, you can really like one person can make a difference, but you get a good collective effort like that. And, you know, you can really, really do some shit. Yeah, man. And, um, you know, it's fucking insanely cool that they, uh, are letting people grow four plants in Virginia. That's fucking insane. I bet you never thought you'd see that happen. Never, never in a million years that I think that would ever happen. Like when they said medical, I was like, get the fuck out of here. Then they're talking about rec. Like, okay. Wow. Like I never thought I'd see any of this in a lifetime. Like I said, all the, all the cool shit on the IG page. Um, just so many, so many good pictures, all this stuff. And that's the thing, like, you know, people can, people can come around and, you know, check out the page and, you know, stay, uh, stay up to date. Um, and then, um, you know, see, see cool stuff like this. And I mean, that one's, that one's crazy. And then you got the, uh, the puck back crosses, like those, uh, those have been kind of, uh, kind of stoked about too, man. Like, uh, fuck, I know it stinks. <laughs> yeah, man, they're fucking, um, really garlicky, really oniony. Um, you know, it's just got that fucked funk that's hard to describe, you know? Yeah. You getting any, uh, you getting any 91, 91 smells out of the, out of the deal? You know, all the Puck VX2s were extremely uniformed and all of them were very similar to the 91, yeah. in my opinion. And uh, so. Yeah, it's pretty wild, man. Like, uh, <clears throat> I did the, uh, the Puck and the Skunk and, like, growing those out when I was hunting, hunting for the males, you know, growing out all the females first. It was pretty, it was pretty crazy. You know, the, some of the smells that would, would come out and be like, what the, what in the hell? Like that smells a lot like something else I know, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The, yep. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Wick family farms just passed me an old skunk one too. And I'm hitting up that to the puck BX too. So I'm Fuck super yeah. see what comes out of that thing. Tell you what, man, you'll see a lot of uh like puck bud, but like some big massive colas out of some of them too. Like it's uh huh. it's pretty wild. Yeah, yeah. The, I, I didn't think that the plants would be this good at yielding, but they're really fucking insane yielders. Yeah, they really are. It's not like that overly dense bud, you know. But it's not that squishy uh, marshmallow, stale marshmallow feeling either. It's like right in between. Like it's pretty, pretty fucking nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, my shit's the, the, you know, the the puck BX two is pretty fucking dense. Um, but you know, uh, you know. I feel like I could throw this nugget across the room right here. That's what I was saying. <laughs> you probably can, like take down a squirrel with that thing. <laughs> Boom! <laughs> Booyah! <laughs> um. Yeah, they were better producers, and um, there's some real shit in there. That's the the reason I got back on the project and did the started the you know the BX3, the cubing, however yeah. you want to refer, um, and the BX2 outcrosses. So. Oh, yeah. And I, yeah. So, um, and, um, so, um, it, you know, like I had mentioned, I'm also working on, you know, trying to go through my older land race and pure, pure lines, and I'm just going to open pollinate those and, um, release, uh, some of them, you know, limited amounts. And, um, if you're into rare cannabinoids and, you know, rare terpenes and, 
you know, breeding stock that, you know, is something that's, you know, not the same exact shit. I, you know, I really recommend you, yeah. you scoop some of it while you can. Um, there's still some of the peshwars left. Um, probably going to release some of the Tom Hills and, um, that'll be in July. And, um, you know, we're doing some t-shirts. Hopefully we'll, we'll get those out, um, here soon. Um, with the, you know, the website crickets and cicadas.com. Hell so yeah. We'll have, uh, some other souvenirs, uh, you know, available later this summer on that website too. Hell yeah, um, man. All oh, pretty, pretty buds and everything too, man. It's just, uh, man. Yeah. Like I said, that's the, uh, that's the website there. Uh, so in case you're like me and, uh, your horrible, horrible, horrible spelling prevents you from doing so much. Uh, <clears throat> there it is. So that way you can, uh, you can actually see, uh, you know, see it written, written out. <laughs> yep. Um, so, you know, it's, uh, gonna have, uh, three NL crosses and, and then the chem 91 to the puck BX one coming here in a few weeks um we're at day 60 right now and everything's looking amazing um they'll be here with seats here now and all the other banks and, nice uh, fuck yeah dude i got a ak bean brains uh selected cut of nl1 in there Ooh. um we're gonna call that one smoke alarm and uh <laughs> yeah that's uh it's going to go to the, to the, you know, pay for the Marriott fund. Uh, I don't know if you heard the story about us at the Emerald cup. Um, yeah, let us know. I haven't heard about it either. <laughs> so it was, uh, me and AK and it was the AK bean brands, uh, credit card. And, uh, you know, uh, they come storming in and slamming on the door and they're like, the police are going to be here in a few minutes. We were taking bong hits, smoking out and, uh, um, so, you know, needless to say, I, you know, grabbed from the fucking bong, jars of weed, mushrooms, and I was out of there faster than you fucking, you know, you could blink. And, uh, <laughs> they had, uh, AK Bean Brain's credit card. So you got the hefty fine and, uh, you know, we'll call this a uh, smoke alarm. It's going to pay for that. It's, it's, uh, selected cut. It's F2. Um, the NL cut is the F2. Uh, it's an old clone that was circulating around uh, Alaska back in the late 80s, nice. just called NF to hit that clone to um, 1989 seed bank stock NL1 from Neville. And then they F2 that, and uh, the female's real good. Um, and uh, so we're going to let that uh, pay for that uh, bill. Um, we've been trying to work something out for a while. And this is, uh, I tried to do a few other things, but they weren't really uh, what I wanted. And this is, uh, this is, you know, really quick. And anyone that's interested in that, you know, an L1 hash plant, you know, which is your shot, those are going to be extremely, uh, hell yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's super awesome of you, dude. Like, you gotta, you gotta look out for the bros, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. I, you know, you, you definitely, uh, you know, I'm not the type to be staying up in the Marriott beforehand. And, you know, now I'm banned for life, so you won't catch me up in there. But we're going to call this uh, one Smoker's Fee, and we'll send it to him to, to take care of that Marriott uh, smoke tax. And uh, also doing a uh, NL two from uh, Jim Ortega by a Vody. By Vody passed it to me. He got it from Jim Ortega. Um, nice dude. Yeah, it's a really strong pine. Um, really cushy cut. Um, those are looking killer. I can't wait to start smoking them. And then. Um, 
an old NL clone. Um, my buddy Gabe Ruth uh, passed that one to me. He's a um, friend of mine I've known for a long time. I met him uh, over 10 years ago uh, through the dog show world, confirmation dog shows. Um, and um, he knew some people and uh, they had been holding this NL cut for uh, 20 years and they were about to get rid of it. And uh, he was like, let me get it. And he got it and he passed it to me. I also passed it to Kevin uh, down at Wonderland. Nice. And, um, you know, just to preserve it. And um, that one's strong pine, you know. Um, actually, the first time I saw the, the flowers, he brought a jar up to me when we were at the Marriott and I showed it to NL uh, AKB and Brains and he thought it was NL5. You know, I thought it was NL5 and so did Kevin, Jay. And, um, but we're just going to release it as uh, NL by the Puck DX one. And, um, hell yeah. Those motherfuckers are, are dank as shit, man. And, uh, you know, um, I passed Gabe Bruce some of the uh, NL2 by NL5 from, uh, Jim Ortega and he hit that back to that old NL clone. So if you're looking for uh, some fucking NL and pure, and it's about the highest quality NL, you know, hit the homie Gabe up. Oh um, yeah. And there's like a lot of um, <clears throat> there's a lot of NL uh going around nowadays. Like I <clears throat> you know, it was like kind of a rare thing some years back, you know, and now it's like everybody's doing uh you know, and all this and all that, uh, that right there, that's your, that's a pick of your, your NL, uh, your NL puck there. Yeah. That's the NL one. It could be nice. Yeah. That's a, that's a real good looking, uh, it's a real good looking plant there, man. What, uh, what are those things? What are they, uh, what are they smelling like? Fucking old school nineties dank, man. Like, uh, <laughs> For real, um, very dank, almost gassy on a few of them, you know. And yeah. um, some of them are more fruity side, but uh, I just you know can't wait to get them cured. I'll know exactly what they're what they're like once they're dry and, and cured. That's right. No wine before it's time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, sometimes they'll surprise you, you know. And, yeah. Good surprises and bad surprises, you know. But yep. It don't matter what it smells like on the vine. It's not it matters what it tastes like and smells like in your jar. That's know? right. That's right, man. And you never know. You got that one surprise and make your upper lip sweat a little bit. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, that's... I look for potency. If it, You know, if it doesn't smoke heavy, I don't release it. You know, that's why I, you know, I wait until everything's cured and do the the smoke test, but after seeing what those uh, Puck BX ones did with all the other outcrosses, and I'm on day 60 right now, I have a pretty good feeling these ones are all going to be fucking killer. Hell yeah, yeah, that that shit look, <clears throat> man, looks uh, looks really, really good, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those fucking 91. Uh, yeah, yeah, fucking. Yeah, Hannah's gonna take all those jars and stash those motherfuckers somewhere. I guarantee you that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and that's uh, there it is right there. I mean, it's just got that. Uh, it, yeah, it's, it's just got like that look. Ninety one. Yeah, looks like ninety one. Man, yeah, man. would they uh, would they end up smelling like those gas extreme? Yeah, fucking gas, dude. They all like I've made a lot of crosses with ninety one, and this one. Um, is the most, uh, you know, all 91. Yeah. Yeah. It's got that look to it. Just like, it's got like an extra layer of resin on it though. I mean, it looks fucking great. Yeah, man. The fucking definitely clicked hard there. Yeah. Man. What was, uh, what was the flower time looking like on, on those? I know y'all, y'all are soil too. 
yeah, yeah, uh, you know, 100% organic and um, HPS lights and uh, we're at day 60 right now. Uh, I'm guessing everything's going to come down at day 63. Then I'll process in the, Yeah. And the, this billion head starting to milk up and get real swole, I bet. I mean, it kind of looks like it from here. Like just from the looking at a picture from afar. Yeah, I think that that, that was a uh, day fifty five or something like that. So yeah, they're, they're really getting fucking nice right now. I bet carbon scrubber. Well, you probably don't even use a carbon scrubber there. Uh, and if you did, it's probably looking to tap out. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, yeah, I mean, I mean, yeah. I have one, but it is. It don't matter. Man. Shit, just stinking. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, carbon scrub was just there to set your drink on or something like that. Put your hat on it or whatever. No, it's definitely helping me. Definitely helping me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fucking awesome. <clears throat> yeah, that stuff, um, man, looks, uh, damn, it looks good. True. Yeah, yeah, like all, all that stuff. Um, I mean, like I said, that NL puck. You know, puck back cross there, and uh, that Sensei Starbucks serious looking too. Man, all all that, man. You've been busy, bud. Yeah, man. Fucking um, I really wanted to get that hash plan into a pure line. You know, I used only the NL one uh, Pacific Northwest. You know, I crossed those two together, and that's where I started the back cross. And I wanted to get that hash plant here so i could hunt through the seeds and see what's in the yeah in the gene pool and um you know make some really nice outcrosses you know that's a really smart starting point too because uh i what do you what are your feelings on it you think that that pacific uh northwest uh hash plants probably is like the same uh same pool as where puck comes from or closely related yeah, you know, uh, there's no way to be 100% certain, but I'm pretty sure that it's the same cut Neville used and, you know, uh, back crossed off yeah. NL1, make his hash plant release, and that's where the scaly uh, puck was selected out of. And, yeah. um, the old sweater seeds. So I, yeah, yeah, so I just followed that same breeding, you know, uh, you know thing along with the back crossing and off the nl1 mail and um hit it to pacific northwest and then i hit it to the puck you know and yeah. uh the bx3 is hitting it to the puck four times in a row Man. um yeah i definitely need to get you that pacific northwest man um so like what i see coming out of her is like two types um some are like super super blingy really big dense buds and they're really not super terpy and then there's the the greasier ones and those are the terpier ones you know that's what the puck is you know she's yeah. not super crystallized you know yeah. but um hell of a grease ball yeah yeah i used uh three males when i um did the nl1 by pacific northwest and um Two or more hash plant leaners, and one was an NL leaner, and that's what I started the back cross with. And um, every time I did a, a breeding from there, I used, you know, four or five. You know, um, when I actually made uh, the BX one, I used thirteen males, and um, trying to keep it as open as possible, considering how inbred it is and back yeah. cross. You know. So, yeah, you, know. you don't want to hit that interbred depression shit. You hit those walls so quickly later down the road that, you know, your three beat back cross is in and boom, you're starting to lose out on shit, you know. That's that's a good exactly. move, bud. Exactly the the reason I did it, but you know, um you know, the line is just showing me um how good it is, you know, um by you know I saw no intersex traits at all on the puck BX is um, BX ones or the BX twos. Um, it's a very stable, amazing line, and um, yeah. you know, it's fucking thanks to Neville. You know, the the greatest you know cannabis breeder in uh, history. You know, yeah, yeah. I'd say he definitely he definitely gets that man. Like, uh, 
man, the, the what he was doing back then and those uh those huge selections that they were able to make out there and he was just going for the the gnarliest of the gnar, you know. And uh man, you know, he was really uh he was really getting it done. Like, yeah, hats off to him. I mean, it was just uh it's just really cool. My whole like reversing males, you know, that's tech that, you know, come come from him. You know, he was uh it was really, really doing it up, man. Yeah, man. Um, it's, uh, you know, like I look at, you know, when I was saving clones, you know, since the nineties, like I'd mentioned, I never uh, thought that this was going to be my end goal. I was just keeping them around so that I could smoke them and grow them. And, uh, yeah. Dudes used to call you the librarian. <laughs> yeah. So anything of Neville's for the last, you know, since I've been collecting has been my goal, you know? And so, yeah, you bro. know, when it all, it all, you know, it all came together with, you know, having the puck from Colorado from Rob Carney and yeah. uh, T-Bud. And then, um, you know, when KQ had preserved the NL1 and then Bodie had the Pacific Northwest, it, it all just uh, came together. You know, like when I got out to Santa Cruz, the, the pieces just all fell in my lap. And um, I've been wanting to, you know, make a pure hash plant line for, you know, since, the, you know, 98. And, um, yeah. You know, it's just, uh, it's a blessing. And I'm really uh, grateful that everything came and grateful to everyone that, did the work before me and, uh, and i'm grateful that i couldn't get these out to the community like when i got them out there to the banks it was like uh the, the biggest feeling of uh relief and um because like it's like one of the big, biggest accomplishments of my life and uh you know besides uh being faithful to Panable for you know since 98 this is like the greatest thing i've ever done you know and um so like it felt really fucking good to send them out to the people and um get them out there and it was really fucking cool the way uh everybody wanted them and uh just like the support you yeah. know and 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 um, you know, it's really cool that people are interested in these old genetics and, uh, you yeah. know, not just the same bottlenecking the whole, the whole cannabis line into the. Yeah. And I guess the thing is like, it's, uh, there is like a huge amount of people like that's what they want and that's what they're looking for. And it's like, yeah, we're, you know, we could go get a bunch of the newest hype of the hype and, you know, sling it together real quick and you know, make some money. But like I said, that's, that's the difference, you know, is like, you're, you're, you're going for a goal out of passion, not, not the other way around, you know? So, you know, we, we could do whatever, but you know, we're, we're going with what we're passionate about. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. This is a perfect example of, you know, do what you love and do what you like. And, um, people will be there to support you in the end when when the product's good you know you don't have to just do something that someone else is doing and yeah because there's plenty of that out there you know that's all there is out there yeah and, uh, you know, hopefully uh you know i can get some of these uh old clones in the seed form and get them out to the people and some of these uh young kids you know into their hands and you know they can be the next neville you yeah know? That's right. That's right. That's an important wanna, thing. I just want to be a stepping stone and, um, you know, hopefully uh, the work can live on through other people using it. And, you know, I really like people who agree with my shit, you know? Yeah. It's cool because, um, yeah, you see a lot of people that like freak out. <clears throat> Somebody's using some of their stuff. And I know you and me and there's a few others like, well, yeah, like do it up. You know, you're, you're, you're carrying that torch, you know, you're doing the, the next thing and that's super cool yeah man uh it, there's so many uh people doing cool shit with the uh, stuff i passed out there and 
you know, that makes me feel like I'm actually doing some good, you know? Yeah. It's, uh, it's just about me selling some seeds to make a living. It's actually about helping the cannabis plant. Yeah. So. Yeah. And that's the thing. Like, I know there's always, uh, you know, you'll see it on IG from time to time. It's always like, uh, oh, you can make so many seeds, man. And you should just give them all away and, and this and that. I can do this. Like, yeah, you didn't pay that electric bill for the last, you know, three years during this project and all that time. Like, there has to be some type of cost to stuff like that, you know. Um, but, you know, I always equated it to, like, you you got a value. Those seeds are not not that expensive, you know, especially by today's standards. And fuck, man, you grow one plant, you know, just some of the bud off that done paid for the seeds. Like that, that's no, no problem. But you know, the preservation and all the work that goes into making that happen. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's, it's important, you know, uh, that's why I'm always, you know, shouting you out is like, it's really important that people support people like you and, you know, a handful of others. I know like you gotta, you gotta, gotta support these people you know they're making this shit happen and um you know with it without that you know like it, it might happen but it's not going to get widespread and it'll just end up the way that it was it's just going to be in you know some dude like uh like bob's uh house and he's hiding up in the hills <laughs> and uh you know and your your chances of encountering him out in the out in the wild are going to be uh slim and none you know so it's it's important you know so yeah for sure that fucking sense of star puck was good enough to just take to that fucking mountain and fucking stay there for yeah. the rest of my life <laughs> yeah, ain't no doubt about that man ain't no doubt about that i tell you um, another one that comes up a lot um <clears throat> some of my discord I, I try to get in there when i can but there's a couple guys there uh they're from back home in virginia and they're like, what's up with that four-way? What's up with that four-way, man? And dude, they are nonstop about it. And anybody says anything, yeah, you ain't never had that four-way though, bruh. So my friend, Biggie, the one that bought the, the pack, um, he's doing a mega hunt off of all the four-way seeds. Uh, um, anybody in the in the crew has made, you know, a lot of them I made. And um He's looking for the next uh, one, you know. Hell and yeah. if anyone's find it, it's him, you know. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, he'll know what he's looking for. Yeah, you know, you, you've had that clone. You know, she's not what she used to be in the 90s, you know. Yeah. She's, she's good, but she's, uh, you know, she's not as, as good as a lot of these other clones. She didn't age as well, you know, as like ChemDog91, even now she's four years younger, you know. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, well, that'd be cool, man. Like a new, a new and improved. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's been um, a, you know, he's hunting through some cool shit. Some, you know, BX threes, some BX ones, a lot of F ones. Um, so yeah, that's super cool, man. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. Um, I think that's probably the best bet of where the next you know skunky fucking four away type plan is going to come out of you know either that or getting the old clone or self tissue culture you know yeah yeah because that one um <clears throat> that one is up there with the skyler uh as far as that that this that skunky smell you know the only thing with the four way is like it had that smell but and it wasn't like a bad thing but like it had like uh most related to like starburst candy or something like that kind of buried beneath all that uh all that fog is super super good but man that's some that's some stinky ass fucking weed man yeah it was um you know smelled like skunk from 10 feet away smelled like skunk when it was in the bag in your pocket type of shit you know when you're breaking it up it, it had a really uh you know like starburst uh you know like sweet Oh, candy smell with the uh, butter. It was kind of like a buttered candy, you know, yeah. like it's weird, bud, so, man. Really weird, bud. <laughs> and potent too. Yeah, 
it definitely was weird and it produces a lot of uh stuff you know it produces a lot of stuff all over the place it doesn't just produce that one terp that everyone associates with yeah. four-way and actually that terp is uh extremely hard to get out of the four-way it produces a lot of cool plants but yeah. um you know the fact that it's a four-way in itself mm. four-way hybrid not stabilized yeah um yeah, that's what I told dude uh, in the Discord. I was like, oh, the reason why, you know, you're not just producing plants that look and smell just like that is it's all in the name. It's a it's a four-way hybrid, it, you know. You, you know, so that one clone, I was like, that was selected, you know, and, like, that's that's what was just happened to be there at that time, you know. But I had homies grow that shit back in the day, and they had some that was kind of similar to that, but, shit, man, there was just as much, like, sweet and fruity and then like spicy black pepper garlic and like it, it would lean all over i think that one that your buddy found was kind of like a good blend of all the above it kind of hit in that median where it had like a lot of good from from all the four yeah dude he's always had that uh luck with genetics and that's why i say if anyone's gonna find the new shit that he's gonna find it and he's doing a mega hunt right now and um you know, like when he bought that pack, uh, there was Northern Lights uh, from Sensi at the time. They found the Fino in that pack that I thought was better than the Four Way personally. Um, tastes like Juniper. Nice. Uh, knocked the shit out of you. Um, he also got a skunk um, Fino of Jack Hair. You know, I never yeah. saw any. He had a, one that just reeked like skunk. He said even more so than the four way. Um, and unfortunately, they lost that one after a few rounds. They had that one out, out in Cali. Um, but uh, yeah, man, he's always had good luck with the genetics. So. Hell yeah, I need to uh, start. Uh, he let me know when he's freed up and start sending them seeds. Be like, hey, man, find me a winner, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Yeah, man. Um, some people just have the luck, or, or you know, you know, they can recognize stuff like that easier than other people. You know. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's a super <clears throat> super cool thing. That's like the other benefit of like, you know, spreading uh, spreading seeds to people, especially like people in your circle that you know, is there's no telling what they'll find, and then you know, it, it finds its way back to you. You know, and that's uh, that's pretty cool. Yeah, 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 for sure. Um, you know, I've been breeding seeds since, you know, the 90s, and I've always, that's what I always did, was just pass them out to the homies, you know? Yeah. Uh, first seeds I ever sold were actually uh, the Puck, yeah, the NL1 by the Puck. Coastal. Yeah, those are cool as hell, man. Uh, you see a lot of that. And then um, I think I was at an Indo Expo. No, I'm not 100 percent sure, but uh, dude, dude had a jar of that with him, and I was like, "Oh, puck, yeah," <laughs> you know. And they popped it open, and it smelled like uh, smelled like puck with a layer of, I don't know, man, like a layer of gas to it. You know, it was it was strong. I was like, "Oh, fuck, man, it's a pretty bud too." Yeah, man, that uh, NL1 now producing really good shit, man. If you guys out there got any those seeds you're sitting on them and fucking pop them and getting them all getting old at this point yeah yeah man like uh i noticed a lot of <clears throat> a lot of guys they would um they, they'll buy up a bunch of packs and shit they won't get around to them for four or five years something like that you know but yeah it starts getting on and like hey man you know maybe hold off on that newest pack that you just got and rotate some of them older ones to the uh to the front and get them Get them popping, pumping. Yeah, man, fucking buying seeds, man. I, you know, it's like uh, a lot. You know, a lot of breeders are just like me, where drops are limited, and it's like you, you better get them, or you you're not gonna be able to get them. You know, and uh, I have so many fucking seeds. <laughs> <laughs> That's it, man. That's it. Yeah, like you, you know, I, I can relate to them. It's definitely, it's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, it's like if they had a uh, 
they had an episode of Hoarders, the uh, the weed grower edition, you know, again, looking in the fridge, you got a, you know, old expired uh, can of fucking something and maybe a little bit of milk, and like a quarter container, some mustard and shit and a whole bunch of seeds up in there. Yep, yep, yep. For <laughs> sure. I used to just store them in the fridge or the freezer, but, uh, you know, um, because, you know, it, out here on the Lost Coast, the fucking power goes out all the time and shit. But I'm just going to have to because um, I just got too many in there. You know, if you don't get the seeds and they're not stored in the fridge, you know, they're going to go bad in about five years. You know? So, yeah, I'm going to have to start storing the fridge and the freezer in a few different spots is my, uh, my plan right now. So that's. Yeah, what I'm doing. that's a good, that's a good call, man. And like I said, when we, when we get to be like big baller status, maybe we can make like a little, little shed with some solar power backup that runs a uh, fridge and freezer and everything. We got our tissue culture preserved. We got our, get our seeds put away and everything. And uh, one day, right? Yeah, that would fucking be hella sweet. <sighs> Second go on vacation. <laughs> oh man it's why you say vacation it's like a it's a humorous joke you know it's like ah. yeah it sounds great doesn't it <laughs> Fuck, man you ain't kidding man you ain't kidding uh but like you said a uh labor of love right bud yeah yeah it's, it's what i love i bought you know uh i dedicated uh most of my life to it and uh you know, it's uh, really cool that I'm actually getting stuff in the seed form and sharing it with people. So yeah, and then plus, like, what would you uh, what would you be doing otherwise, right? You, you know, probably get in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> you just say, "What? Why they broke up, man? What'd you say?" Uh, just taking care of the plants, not sharing them. Yep. <laughs> yeah. plant, plant person, you know, I got uh, house plants. I got fucking cactuses behind me everywhere you know i, I collect cactus clones uh, sprout cactus seeds you know i got uh enough cactuses to start a nursery which you know i might have to start doing it, you know at this point they're just overtaking everything <laughs> i know man i was looking in the background i was like it's a lot of it's a lot of cacti there but yeah man you know it's just like cannabis they're like clones and uh you know fucking you know, got to have all the good ones, you know, mm -hmm. with the desirable genetics, you know? Yeah. I guess they're a little more forgiving when it comes to vacations too. So I was getting ready to be like, oh man, I'd say buy the vacation, but they can hold off pretty good. Uh, they're fucking awesome, man. They're so patient and uh, forgiving, you know, um, compared to the cannabis plant. You know? Yeah, man. Cannabis is very needy. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, very, very much so. Very much so. Especially those high quality old clones. So. Yeah, yeah, man. And like I said, even even if you know something's gonna be took care of, while you're gone for those days, like it lingers in the back of your head. You know, like ah oh, man, what if, what if, and like yeah, yeah, man. It's uh, yeah, there's only a few people that can really uh take care of you know it's it's not like just going in there and watering a monocrop you know when you got all those different plants it's a, it's a, it's a tough situation yeah yeah it is because they they like people you know they got their own individual needs and pickiness and uh their own little attitudes and shit sometimes yeah man there's so many um unique traits and all these different clones and um it's really cool seeing, you know, which ones can pass, which traits in the seed forms with which male. Hell yeah, dude. So what do you, uh, what do you got, uh, what you got cooking, man? When you, you got any shows you're going to, uh, in the future or well, the near future? Um, you know, I'm just going to be going to some of the Humboldt local seed swaps. Um, you know, that's about it. You know, I'm staying busy. I'm doing a lot of 
work, you know, um, finishing the puck, the X3s right now. Um, taking Master Kush uh, to a BX1, taking the Pacific Northwest to BX2, um, take a Purple Hindu Kush to BX2, and uh, taking Trainwreck to BX2. Um, so I'm lining all those projects up uh, one after another, and uh, that's going to keep me really busy because I'm going to take the Master Kush and uh, make a BX2, and at that point, um, I'm going to hit the SoCal Master and the Eugene Master for try to get some Master Kush in the seat for him. That's super awesome. That's a, that's a pretty righteous project right there, too, man. Like, that's that's some good shit. Yeah, yeah, I love fucking Master Kush, and um, so, and uh, I, if I can get that stuff to click, uh, I'll be really happy about that. Hell yeah, dude. Like, like I said, being able to, <clears throat> it's like kind of hopping back in a time machine, you're able to take these, like, really awesome things of old and introduce them to the to the newer cats and actually be like yeah okay now you know i see where you're coming from now <laughs> that, that is some really good really strong shit and uh letting them experience that too and as well as like you know like i said it preserves it it keeps it going you know for the for the future that's uh it's all good things yeah, yeah, for sure. It's just it's awesome when it works out, man. It's a pain in the ass when the the project doesn't work. Uh, you know, that happens sometimes. Yeah, you know? it does, man. People don't know about that. You know, they only see the uh, the successes and that you know that finished product. They don't see all the work and heartache leading up to it, and then they don't see those projects where it's like, wow, it just didn't work out uh, as good. You know, and you have to just make it. You know, turns into bird seed. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's talking about birdseed. I have a uh, Afghanistan uh, yeah. S1 uh, that I hit to the Pride of Afghanistan open pollination. So uh, I, I was calling it Pride of Afghanistan. <laughs> I took that to F3 to try to eliminate uh, hermaphroditic traits. And um, I'm at F3 and I grew those out right now. Yeah, I'm not taking that to F4, man. That's F3 of bird seed, man. F3, high quality <laughs> bird seed. <laughs> well, them robins and them crows and all them, they'll be they'll be stoked for it. Yeah, there's some good smoke in there, but it's just like, you know, still at F3, uh, even though I called out all the hermaphrodites at F2, there was a lot of, in the F2 generation. They still carried it. Um, I'm going to harvest them here on my day. 60 they'd have to be hella good for me to fucking want to hunt through those to make f4s after you know yeah yeah it comes to that fail failing you know yeah that's the thing they can't they can't all be winners and sometimes shit this looks uh looks great on paper and in the head you know and the idea concept and then you get down to it and it's like yeah just does it work and you know it's always a hard call you know it's like yeah it's just do i keep do i keep keep putting a year or more into this and you know but you got so many other awesome things in the background it's like well these are doing right so you know that's got to be a back burner or bird seed one of the two and need to keep keep moving forward yeah man it's it's uh you know it sucks there's been a bunch of other fucking fails too but you know you, you got to get to the bad shit to get to the good shit. You That's know? right. Um, you know, nobody wants to deal with fucking 50% hermaphrodites, you know. It's just unacceptable. And that's the reason we test shit over here, you know. Yeah. I don't know, man. There's a lot of people who pay 500 bucks for uh, for some, <laughs> some 50% bananas. But, you know, I don't know. You know, I don't think that's the majority of people, though. Yeah, we're trying to have repeat customers and build a <laughs> brand here. Yeah. The goal is not to sell on a fucking some fake ass. <laughs> I know that's right. I know that's right, dude. Yeah, that's the thing, man. The longevity and, like I said, uh, <clears throat> doing unto others, you know, as you'd have done unto you. 
you know yeah that's exactly how um i do my breeding program you yeah. know yeah if you don't want to smoke it then chances are nobody else does either you know yep exactly i breed what i want and uh you know it doesn't turn out the way i want and how i like it you know it doesn't get released that's it man that's it that's what i i've always kind of gone by is if if i dig it i really like it there's a pretty good chance everybody else might too not everybody but you know there there will be people that are super into it and they'll they'll seek it out yeah yeah for sure and um you know all these young kids uh will probably like it if they try it you know yeah um, they just uh you know we like the we we you know grew up smoking you know yeah and that's what we're trying to produce and um you know i i feel like uh we're making really good impact on the gene pool so you know yeah. I think we're doing really good yeah i'm right there with you man i think uh you just keep doing the work and you know all the rest to follow you, you know you stick into your goals and what you're passionate about and i know like <clears throat> you're you're a picky motherfucker man I'm, I'm the same way so that's that's really good for the for the end user there you know because if it doesn't pass your standard um if it meets it or exceeds it then you're gonna have some really happy people on the other end yeah yeah for sure i'm you know i moved out to emerald triangle in 97 you know to be around the best and you know to be the best i could be and then you know push myself and uh, you know fell in love with the uh, california and uh, how beautiful it is up here all the rivers and, and mountains and shit i'd never even been to california or uh you know the west coast when i uh, yeah it's a big change from uh, right northern virginia isn't it <laughs> fuck yeah uh came out with the homie biggie he drove and he was like we're doing it you know and then we got a fucking plant uh place out in burnt ranch and then grew some outdoor that first year in 97 and um, never regret you know coming out here and you know it's been a wild fucking adventure man um Humboldt County in the in the late nineties, early two thousands was some fucking wild west shit, man. Yeah. It's like hard to describe. It's like a different universe. Unfortunately, it's uh it's changed a lot. It's it's still changing. And uh you know, that's why I say, man, if you can come out to one of the Humboldt locals events, man, um get a taste of that old Humboldt feel of community and stuff. It, you know, it's like, I don't, I, you know, as far as, you know, traveling to a cannabis event, you know, Hell yeah. I can't imagine going to a better uh, situation, you know, like, you know, so. Yeah, I can't wait, dude. I, uh, as soon as this thing's, uh, wrapped up or whatever, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm on it. <laughs> I got a lot of, a lot of traveling, uh, a lot of traveling I need to do as well. Yeah. Can't wait to kick it with you, man. Yeah, it'd be good, man. Like I said, last time was uh, at the last Emerald Cup uh, that I went to. And, uh, you know, previous to that, working working out in the fields, fucking getting sunburns and uh, doing some big hemping. <laughs> it'd be good to come yeah. out and kick it with you. Yeah, man. That was uh, some serious fucking work we did. And, uh, probably the biggest can water field and not a fucking third world country you know ever <laughs> uh, yeah yeah i mean even in humboldt they don't fucking hand water 10 acres so. yeah we made that shit happen though like yeah that little <laughs> rig that little rig with like the gas pump style fill up with the generator on the back of a four-wheeler basically like that was uh that was that was clever you know <laughs> Yeah, yeah, clever, man. But, uh, you know, it wasn't the original plan. That's for damn sure. <laughs> yeah, man. You know how it is, man. Uh, adapt and overcome. <laughs> yes, that's life, man. That is life. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, so yeah, that, that's cool, man. Those, uh, so you're going to post up on your, uh, on your page when you, uh, like when you're going to some of these events and everything or 
Or are they kind of like local quiet deal? Yeah, yeah. I'll, yeah, I post them up and then uh, you got to contact him uh, to get the, you know, uh, the directions and, and, and the invite and shit. And, uh, you know, it's just fucking really cool. Yeah, man. Yeah, because I know like there'd be a lot of people like to come come meet you and all that good stuff. So that'd probably be a good good spot to to do it. Yeah, like I said, man, I'm just gonna I bring jars for people to smoke on and uh, fucking sesh and uh, smoke all you want, you know. And, uh, That's awesome. The weed, we can talk shit, you know, ask questions. Yeah, that's badass, dude. Fucking, <clears throat> that's the cool thing about, you know, stuff like that. There's really, you know, mega huge events. It's like, it's real hard, you know, because you get a lot of people wanting to talk, you know, at length or whatever. And it's uh, it's hard to actually, you know, kick it and talk and, and go over stuff like that. So uh, that'd be a cool, cool opportunity for people. Yeah, something like the Emerald Cup is just fucking overwhelming, man. Yeah. Well, way overwhelming. This is a, a lot chiller and um, a lot more like laid back vibe. And, you know, um, it's fucking uh, really cool. You know, yeah, you know, just going out to a cool spot out in Humboldt County in the hills somewhere, and meeting with a bunch of real country people. And, yeah man you really you, you get to see a lot of a lot of cool different things that you normally you wouldn't you wouldn't see elsewhere or otherwise and you it, it reminds me of like kind of like how virginia is like these aren't like all a bunch of like internet people and hype people and looking for this and that like they're just looking for the best shit that they can grow and they're looking to grow it the best way that they can and like you, you get to see a lot of that at places like that. You're not gonna see it on IG or YouTube for that matter. You know, you're gonna see it there live and in, in person. And uh, it, it's really, it's just a, it's just a cool thing, man. I'm glad they're, you know, you got somebody out there, you know, putting on events like that again. Yeah, it's uh, fucking cool, and um, you know, hopefully. Uh, you're going to be seeing a lot more of that in California. They just uh, passed, you know, farmer's markets. So uh, people can vend at farmer's markets uh, directly to customers now. That's a huge game changer. And, you know, hopefully, uh, you know, these other states will see how, you know, what didn't work in California with the overtax and overregulation. You know, yeah. you, need, you need everybody. Uh, you know, to be happy, you can't have the people paying hundred and twenty dollars a quarter for the high high grade shit. You know, and, you and farmers it. farmers still not be making any money. You know, that's fucking ridiculous. Yeah, I think that's what they call in the uh, the corporate world uh, non sustainable business market or you know uh, model. So yeah, it doesn't it doesn't work out like that if you're you know killing off your farmers and everything else um you know it's a it's a good way to just kind of crash and burn and it's not not good it's like everybody's talking about the the new oh yeah it's gonna be federally legal federally legal what do you think i'm like i've never anytime government gets involved in anything it's never been good um as far as that goes so i don't know man what what do you think dude man i don't shit i don't know man don't know. I hope it does good, babe. Yeah, I, I just figure like good, bad, and different. No matter what, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna keep doing the same thing I do anyway. <laughs> yeah, man. Um, you know, I never would have predicted the way uh, legal fiction went. And, uh, yeah. So it's, I never would have predicted it would have been, you know. As fast as it did. Um, yeah, but here we are. You know, here we are. We're doing it. You know, and uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's still kind of unbelievable. But yeah, like I said, here we are and uh, able to do our thing. And 
not uh not sitting in a cell somewhere <laughs> and talking about it in a cell. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. I was uh real happy to hear from you when you when you got free, man. So Oh so. yeah. Yeah, I can't keep it going. And um speaking of uh people sitting in the cells, I got a friend uh that uh has done way too much fucking time. Um he was a young kid sitting in a hotel in Fairfax. He was just hanging out with some ballers, you know, like real big ballers. And he just happened to be the only one that was in the fucking hotel room at the time. And the police kicked in the doors and there was a lot of weight in the hotel room. And he fucking ate that bullet and did a bunch of federal time. And uh, fucking got out, you know, and started doing, you know, some work, you know, get himself back and... uh He's flying back from Cali, and uh, the fucking feds were waiting for him at the airport. And, uh, you know, he wasn't going to go back in the cell again. So, you know, he ran, and, uh, you know, he was hiding for fucking, you know, a long-ass time. And he got uh, popped in a grow out in Tahoe, and uh, they uh, didn't find that he was wanted and he was like holy shit i've been fucking hiding for like 20 years like hiding you know like and he was like holy shit i need to go see my parents um he had just had a, a kid with a girl from england that um you know came over here to trim and uh you know they fell in love and had a kid and they flew all, they drove actually they drove all the way to virginia and then you got to see his parents you know and they got to see the grandkid and he uh drove all the way back and then he was like half an hour away from the spot and he got pulled over and the cop you know asked for his driver's license and come back with the guns you know he's in the car with his son and you know it's like a year old son and uh Ugh. his girl from england and fucking then you know you know, it's freaking out, treating him like he's some fucking Jack the Ripper. You know, this guy's done nothing violent, man. It's all cannabis charges. And, you know, he's, he's still in the pen right now. It's, he's been in quite a few years. And um, he's going to do a fundraiser for the homie, man. And, you know, this motherfucker has paid way too much just for cannabis. And um, Yeah. Well, you let me know when you do, man, because... Uh... <clears throat> You know, that's like a story you hear like way too many times and it always bothers me too. And they're like, oh, legal, legal, legal. Like I've never seen people still going to, you know, prison over, you know, quote unquote legal. And it bothers me every time. There was, um, there's a page on IG that's, uh, you know, for guys that, you know, had been, um, it's called Last Prisoner Project. And you gotta, you see it all, you know, every day, um, a guy that's like, yeah, he got, you know, pulled over with, with weed or got caught growing, what have you, and they got smashed on the state level, you know. It's like, all right, well, 25 years ago, this guy got caught with, like, two pounds, and boom, he's still locked up in a state where it's, like, legal by the state, and you still got the same dude, you know, sitting in the cell. It's just, it's sad, you know, it's real sad. And like a lot of people don't even realize, like, it's still dudes like sitting there wasting away. Yeah, it's fucking insane, dude. It's uh, really insane. And um, yeah, it's sad, man. It, it, you know, yeah, it really is. When this, guy, when this guy wasn't in in jail, he was hiding the whole time, like, you know, it's, you know, yeah, I never been on the run, but, uh, you know, I, I know it ain't fucking fun and you're always looking over your shoulder and that's, you know, no way to live your life, man. And it's all because of cannabis. And, um, you know, hopefully when a guy gets out, he can get a, a good job and shit because he's a fucking good ass grower. And You know, that's the other spot you end up, uh, you get fucked over is uh, <clears throat> you'll, you get out, you'll go for that job. And they'll tell you, well, you can't get our, uh, you don't meet our badging requirement because, uh, you know, uh, you got a drug crime. It's like, no, no, I have a weed crime, you know? And they're like, yeah, sorry. It's kind of fucked up. I know they've been changing that around a little bit, but, you know. Yeah, that's the way it is in Colorado, man. That's for sure. Fuck that. Yeah. Uh, ridiculous, man. Yeah, it really is, man. It really is. 
how's it out um kind of out your way like is the licensing and all that started to kind of smooth out or is it still kind of kind of all fucked up um you know it's it's pretty cool man um you know bamboo just got a distribution and a, um retail from it in oakland um it's actually because he's you know been charged and stuff that he's able to get it so uh you know and uh it's really cool to see the homie get that and uh he's you know he's gonna make some cool ass shit and some cool moves happen with that that's awesome fuck yeah yeah i'm glad to hear that because i know like at first it it was like i guess it's like that everywhere when it first starts up it's like a big mess until they kind of figure it out but i know like um uh, sun grim mids you know he, he's a real big advocate, you know, you, you can catch him at, at a town hall, you know what I mean, with a, a group of people, people out there, they still go to those town halls, they realize like, hey, yeah, legalization happens, but like that fight isn't over. And that's something that I tell like, friends out in Virginia that want to have that talk. I'm like, yeah, you, you might have it, but you cannot stop fighting because they're always looking to you know, change this, change that, and get more of a grip on you. Like you, you have to keep fighting for that, for that right to to do your thing. Yeah, man, it's it's fucked up what they did to the farmers out there in Calaveras County. Um, you know, Trevor's an amazing person, and you know everyone else that had farms out there, and you know did the legal steps, and then they're just they took it away from them for no reason. Um, you know, uh, basically, uh, you know, I don't really say why, but it's, you know, pretty fucked up. And, uh, you know, Trevor's awesome, dude, man. He's fucking, yeah. um, done grown mids on Instagram. Check him out, man. He, uh, just wrote an article about all the, uh, puck back crossing, uh, puck, uh, um, outcrosses with Skunk Magazine. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. Man. We're honored. We, we love skunk magazine and it's the first time we've been in there and uh we're yeah. just looking yeah that's uh that's it uh that's it right there um yeah there it is <clears throat> yeah trevor's a good good dude definitely a good dude and he's a real knowledgeable guy too he's smart as shit dude yeah wicked smart dude like fucking uh a lot of that stuff man just, uh... yeah man yeah, it's uh Probably. super cool. <laughs> I'm a hard knocks guy, you know. I like to do a breeding and grow it out. That's how I learn, you know. So Yeah, man. Fuck yeah. yeah. That's a good way, good way to be, man. Fucking like I said, it's just it's good to see you, dude. It's just, you know, I'm glad to hear you doing awesome with the family and your extended family with the plants and all that stuff and you're just kicking ass out there. Fuck yeah, man. It's uh, great to spend some time with you. And fucking uh, thanks for having me as your first guest. I'm fucking honored. Yeah, dude. Fucking uh, numero numero uno. Got one uh, one in the books here, man. <laughs> Hell yeah, man. Oh, yeah. Well, I guess. I love, uh, chatting cannabis with people but i'm always nervous before one of these shows i'm not one of the types that likes to get up in, in public but you know i had a really good time chatting with you man yeah man you know what i mean it's uh this is all casual laid back you know what i mean fucking it's not the old uh the old q a 21 fast fire question round or anything <laughs> yeah for sure man I, you know i love the way uh you know, the podcast puts people on the hot spot, though. That is pretty fucking uh, good way he yeah. does it. But this is very chill. Uh, and, uh, you know, I can't wait to get back and talk with you again sometime. Yeah, dude, you can come on here. Come on here anytime, man. I'm going to uh, I get Jordan on here one of these days, and uh, I'll hit him with the fast fire questions or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Addison, hell yeah. yeah. I'm the captain now. <laughs> I love how we could 
uh, somebody a rope and he's like, oh, you can pull yourself out of a hole or you can hang yourself with it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got, he's got a real classy way of doing it too. And like with the accent and everything, you know, it's just, it's, it's real nice. Yeah, yeah, for sure, man. He's, he's definitely a class act. For sure, dude. For sure. Well, I know, like, I know you're a busy guy, man, and, uh, those plants ain't going to water themselves. And I know the family's ready for you to, to get back in, but man, just thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, dude. Like, uh, it's awesome. Oh yeah. Thanks a lot, man. Have a good night. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, fucking catch him in, uh, Bob Hempel. You can catch him at Bob Hempel, uh, you know, cricket and cicada seeds, <clears throat> catch him on IG and everything. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's a uh, good dude, good people. Um, make sure you uh, make sure you give them give them your support and everything. And uh, Bob, good as always, brother. And uh, I'll catch you later, man. Later, bro. <laughs>